Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Overcoming Graduation with Brian Drury, a show where I work to teach you everything I wished I'd known about life to help you graduate to the next level in your own. Today's another installment of The Morning Commute, where I take my ride to work in the morning to share a short but powerful message with you to help you kick your day off on the right foot. And today's message is this. Set a high-low bar. An interesting thing happens in life when we are looking at the goals that we want to achieve, the people we want to meet, the relationships we want to have. And what's interesting is when we look at it from a kid's perspective, when you talk to a kid about what they want to do, they don't have all the self-imposed limitations that we've created. And you might go, well, mine aren't self-imposed, it's just reality. Well, bear with me because this is what we're talking about. We look at a kid and they go, oh yeah, I want to be this, I want to do that. I want to be an astronaut. And what a kid goes is, I want to do it, so I'll do it. Like, you just do it. They don't know what it will take. But in their mind, they're like, yeah, I'm going to make it happen. Then an adult goes, well, it takes a lot of school, and it's a really selective program, and it's this and this and this and this, and uses that as justification to not even try. And here's the real interesting thing. We will do that in just about every aspect and area of our lives. Because although the brain went, yeah, it takes a lot of education, it's extremely selective, uh, it takes extremely intelligent individuals from all over the world, that all may be true, but that does not make it impossible. A lot of times the reason we don't do things is because it just seems more uncomfortable than we think we're capable of taking or more uncomfortable than we're willing to take. Because everyone says they want it, but no, like, so many people say they want it, whatever that thing is. And so few of those people are willing to do it because it seems tough, it seems hard, or it would take them letting go of who they are, bad habits, bad ways of behaving, unhealthy relationships to get there, and that aspect of growth in a positive way seems too scary, so we often self-sabotage and keep ourselves exactly where we are. Setting a high-low bar is important in everything, and where I see this the most, where I've experienced the most, and I see it the most, whether it's just my friends or clients I work with, is in dating relationships. I have heard people say, you know, maybe I'm just asking for too much. Maybe I'm setting too high of a bar. Maybe I just need, and they don't say these words typically, but maybe I just need to settle. The types of words people typically use in those situations are maybe it's good enough or it's really not as bad as it seems or oh he or she will come around they're gonna get better or they're just going through a rough patch and when you look in someone's eyes when they say these things you can tell when they're lying to themselves I know that because I do that for my clients and I have had my coaches mentors and friends do that for me countless times where I've been saying one thing, but my heart deep down knew that what I was saying wasn't true. It's hard to admit because we decide it's hard. We decide it's more complicated because we're trying to rationalize away the obvious facts for us so that we can keep this thing that we believe completes us in some way or gives us what we need to justify ourselves as a person. I've often talked about on this podcast, for many years, my life was around female attention and sex. Like That was the core of what I thought my life was meant to be about. So when I had those things, I felt justified as a man. I felt like I was attractive. I felt like I was good or great. But when I didn't have those things, I felt like shit, felt miserable and desperately went out seeking it and kept lowering the bar so that I could get some sex or some female attention even if it wasn't anywhere near what I wanted or knew I deserved. And I would often justify that, like, oh, well, now I'm just trying to have some fun. And when I'm needy, clingy, texting girls to try and get their attention, get some type of validation from them, whatever it may be, it's, oh, send a text, send a picture, send this, send that, like, let's hang out, let's hook up. I even hate saying it now, but it's true, guys. Like, that was... My reality for a long time was just desperately seeking this attention. 
thinking that if I got it, I would finally feel happy. I would finally feel good. I would finally feel worthy. Never fully realizing that the external things I was chasing, no matter what they were, were never going to bring that internal fulfillment, that peace, that love, and that growth. The reason I said to set a high-low bar is that we are so quick to lower our expectations in others because we often are willing to do it in ourselves. Always remember the Byron Katie quote I bring up a lot on this show because it's so important. It's that our external world is a reflection of our internal world. And if we're used to letting ourselves down and not setting boundaries and keeping to them and not keeping our promises, well, that behavior becomes par for the course. And then when someone else does it to us, we just go, well, yeah, that's just what people do. No, that's what I do or that's what you do. As the individual, we can own it and say, but I don't want that anymore. We can choose to change it. So our low bar is the lowest that we're willing to accept. It's the, the minimum. That's the bare minimum of what is acceptable for you in a situation. Guys, to be honest, the bar for being exceptional in the world today is pretty low. That might sound contradictory, but most people aren't giving a shit or aren't even trying to change things or to do more or to bring more value. Most people in the corporations I've worked in, it's often, hey, just come in, do your thing, do what you're supposed to and bounce. And don't get me wrong, there's days where I absolutely need to do that or want to do that. I'm just like, you know what, that was good. I got done what I needed to. But the only way I've grown, the only way I've expanded, the only way I've created more opportunities for myself is by going above and beyond, both in my professional and personal life. The only way that things have changed in my life and gotten better, and the only way I was able to, I've been able to overcome the loss of my mom to cancer when I was 24 years old, which for a while I wasn't sure how long it would take me to come back. I had a feeling I would, but it felt real distant. It's like the only way I've been able to come through that and use that to help people is by going above and beyond what was normal for me. Because going above and beyond what's normal for others or what the expectation is of others, you could, either, you could be setting an even lower bar. Or you might be setting a bar that's too high at this time. So here's the thing. It's like that bar is something that has to be set by you for you to help you push and help you grow. For example, a too high bar might be, hey, I haven't worked out in six months, but I'm gonna go and try bench 300 pounds. It's a literal bar and a figurative bar. But in that case, that's too much. You gotta work up to it. But if you say, hey, I'm gonna work towards 300 pounds, that's my goal, that's my new high bar, and I'm gonna give myself six months or a year, whatever the time frame is for you to get there, Okay, now we're talking. In relationships, I was speaking to a woman recently, and she said, I thought I was setting too high of a bar. She said, I told myself and said to my friends, there's no good men out there anymore. I felt like the men I dated, they just all fell short of even close to what I knew I really wanted. And it had been years since she had met someone that even made her challenge or reconsider that at all. So she st- and she kept praying. She has real strong faith in God. And she kept praying, saying, "You know, God, please help me find and help me meet this man, like the man that I know I I want, the man I know I deserve, the man who will lift me up and I will lift up, and we will both grow together in life." But again, she kept waiting. And when I say waiting, I mean she didn't just settle. Because she was out living her life. She was out doing the things she loved. She kept going to dance classes. She's a busy, busy, full schedule, but she found a way to continue to grow herself and put herself in situations where that had a chance of happening. Because something I used to do all the time was complain about how, you know, why wasn't I meeting amazing, incredible girls that shared my interests when all I was doing was sitting on the couch and swiping on Tinder? It's like, come on, dude. It's pretty obvious why not. Like, If you're not excited about living your life, why would someone else be excited about living your life and joining in on that ride with you? 
Create the excitement for yourself. Create the joy. Create the peace. Don't be dependent on someone else for happiness. And then you'd be amazed how people show up in your life. And so this young woman I was talking about, she kept living her life. She kept doing it. And that voice, that negative voice, that imposter voice, that lying voice inside of you that says, that doesn't exist. A guy who respects you and supports you and who works hard and has a great future and has strong integrity and values and is fiercely loyal, that guy doesn't exist. Stop wasting your time. Listen, these guys are good enough. Remember that guy you went on a date with? Yeah, he wasn't. There was nothing wrong with him. That's something we'll often say. He's not wrong. He's not bad. Yeah, but he's not right for you. I, I don't get why I don't like him. You don't have to. <laughs> he seems like such a great guy, but I just don't. Well, then it doesn't. Like, that's the thing, guys. We don't have to justify love. We don't have to justify or rationalize our feelings towards another human being in all circumstances. Like, and that's the thing. Like, if it's not there, it's not there. I think it's real good to examine our emotions, to look at what makes sense and what doesn't. But trying to force love, trying to create it when it's not there, here's the thing I would challenge you on that if you're experiencing that right now, is go deep into why you're not feeling love. Because I can almost guarantee you will get down to it if you go deep enough that you just don't love this person. It's not that there's anything wrong with them. There's pr plenty of incredible people in the world that you will never love as a romantic partner. That's okay. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Just know that if you're not feeling it and you're not leaning into it full out, they won't be either. And here's an even, uh, even worse thing. If you're not leaning in full out and they are, you're doing them a disservice. You're doing yourself a disservice because the more time you're spending together is the more time you could be with the right person who is going to be as committed to you as you are to them and leaning in fully and thrilled, fucking stoked about being with you. So that young woman that I've been talking about recently met a guy who is better than all of her expectations. She's been, she's told me about him and said, I can't believe it. It seems too good to be true. In fact, she's like, he and I both said that. But all of the actions are showing that it's not. Because when it seems too good to be true, and we're trying to convince ourselves that it's, oh my God, it's, it's, it's not, it's just this, it's this, but there's all these behaviors that are showing that maybe it is see, a little bit too good to be true different story but when the person's actions and their words line up and the only negatives are our negative voices inside that's a great sign she said I don't know how I lived without this guy and she said I kept praying and I kept waiting and thinking maybe it was too late or maybe I was getting too old or maybe it wasn't, I wasn't ever going to happen for me but God had a plan for me that was better than anything that I could imagine. And for you guys listening, it's not about whether or not you are, you believe in God or you're Christian or Catholic or atheist or whatever. It's not about that. Whether you call it the universe, whether you call it nothing, whether you call it God, whether you call it any other Buddha, it could be anything. It is not about what you call these beautiful things happening in our lives or what how things come together but when you believe that there is something greater out there and you work to rise up to bring yourself up to the level you want to be at you're going to start to meet people that are doing the same thing and also as you raise your level up you stop wasting time settling you stop wasting time on people that do not deserve your time they don't have to be the devil or bad people to not deserve to be a part of your life. Something my dad has always said to me is that people need to earn the right to be a part of your life and to share your time. It's something that we have to dictate and choose because no one else will do it for us. So, when you look at your life, 
and you look at where you are setting your bar right now, start asking yourself, where is it? Are you hiding behind fear and what you're calling rational thought, which is really just masked fear, to keep yourself from what you really want because you're not willing to wait or put in the work or spend the time or be patient? It's real easy to do that because it's real easy to set the low bar because most people in your lives and most people around you won't challenge that. Most people will agree. And honestly, here's an interesting thing to check. If you're surrounded by people that constantly demean your dreams, put them down, and tell you it's not good enough, and then when you settle, they go good because they're happy that there's no one challenging their frame of reality, it's time to start reevaluating the people you surround yourself with because you want your romantic relationships, your friendships, and your familial relationships to all be lifting you up. And if they're not, it may be time to take some time away or step away completely from these people. I know you go, oh, but family's different. It can be. But there's also times where familial relationships are toxic and there needs to be time where you step away to make it clear that you won't accept a low bar from these people. We teach people how to treat us. And if we set low bars, people will rise to our low bars. If we set a high low bar, like our low is way fucking above where it's ever been. It's not about making things impossible for people. It's not about setting the highest possible bar where you need the person to be an astronaut, a professional salsa dancer, and they need to have been to Mars three times. Otherwise, they're just not good enough. It's not about creating an impossible list of criteria that are so oddly specific that no one will ever meet it so that we can rationalize ourselves away from anything. Because I've seen that too. His fingernails need to be three quarters of an inch and he needs to be 6'11 and one half inch and he needs to have a dimple on his left cheek but not his right. It's like these are, these are things that are just stupid bullshit barriers. I had a conversation with one of my roommates and we were talking about love and uh, one of the quotes that came up was, how, well, how do you know when it's love? It's like, well, you know it's love when the things that used to seem important the things that used to seem like top priorities just don't seem to matter at all because the things that this person has demonstrates, shows, and brings to the relationship are so much better than those things that you thought were important. I want to challenge you guys to set a high bar because there have been so many times in my life where I have either lowered the bar or let go of the bar entirely and then dealt with the emotions afterwards, upset with myself, angry at myself, Hating myself at times, going, what the fuck are you doing, man? Why do you keep doing this to yourself? I don't want you guys to have to go through that. And I want you to create the patience and the intensity of working towards your dreams that brings those things to you. You can't control the timing on everything. But you can absolutely not waste time on things that don't deserve your time. And that's maybe ways of thinking. That may be how you start your day. That may be how... How you approach your goals at work, setting a high-low bar, chasing and pursuing some struggle, some good, positive struggle in your life is fucking beautiful because it helps you grow. And I believe this life is all about growth and sharing our growth with others. So, to wrap up today, where in your life are you setting a low bar? And what's one thing you can do today to raise that up to be a high bar? What's one thing you can do today to make sure that your bare minimum to you is fucking phenomenal? And that's in how you show up. That's how people show up in your life. That's how you perceive your life and how you think and act and how you take care of yourself. This bar isn't just about dating relationships. It's about everything. And honestly, you take better care of yourself. Your dating relationships will improve. Because as you start to love yourself more, you start taking less shit from people and you start accepting less bullshit. What's one thing you can do today to raise your bar? 
I love you all. Thank you for listening today. This is another episode of Overcoming Graduation with Brian Drury. If this episode was of value to you, if there's someone you know that needs to hear this, if these words spoke directly to you or as you heard this, you kept thinking about someone else, please share this with them. Please send this to them. Please take the five seconds it takes to text them and shoot them this message because they may need it a lot more than you realize and you would be amazed how many times I've sent one text, one video, one YouTube clip, one just text message saying, hey, I really appreciate you and you mean a lot to me and how much that person needed that at that time. And sharing this out gets it out to more people that we're able to touch more lives and you are a part of that. You get to be a part of bringing more light to the world and to people in you. So if this was a value, share it out with your friends and following, send it to somebody directly. Like I said, tie your phone to a carrier pigeon and just let them loose and have this up at the thing with a play me sticky note on it. If you want to learn more about Overcoming Graduation, you can visit overcominggraduation.com or check out Overcoming Graduation on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you name it. And if you'd like to reach out to me directly uh, to talk about the episode, to have ask questions or give your own comments and insight, to ask a question you want me to answer on a show, because I would love to do that as well. I could do a full morning commute on your question if you reach out. You can contact me at brian at overcominggraduation.com. You can also reach out to me about speaking engagements, about coaching, whatever. That is the email address is brian at overcominggraduation.com. So be sure to subscribe to the podcast so that you stay up to date with all the latest updates, newest episodes, etc. And you can be on, on the list when we have new events, new webinars, new things coming out. And otherwise, guys, that will be all for today. I love you all. Thank you for listening. And go raise that bar today. Have a fantastic day. And I will talk to you again real soon.